Hi everyone, Charlene with Tranquil Tuesdays. And today I'm going to focus on using a guy wand to brew your tea. So uh, a guy wand is always composed of three pieces, the lid, the guy, the cup, the wand, and the lid. I mean, sorry, the saucer, which is not part of the name and maybe it feels left out. But anyways, um, today I'm going to brew a Taiwanese oolong tea. I've written a lot about Taiwanese oolong before, and I've written some stuff about um, guy ones before, like the history and stuff, and I'll put links for that in the video description so you guys can read that background stuff. So today I'm really just going to focus on how to brew with the guy one. Um, you know, the guy one's definitely probably the most distinctive, yes, yet mysterious or least understood or least familiar piece of tea brewing equipment in traditional Chinese tea setup. So thought this would be a good chance to show you guys how to do it. So we're going to start off with um, heating the cup first, like we did with the Pyrex, right? And this is similar to when you're cooking and you want to heat up your pan before you put in the oil. Same idea. Gonna sorry, that was from the last brew. Heat up the cups, then I'm gonna serve in. And today I'm using a clear decanter cha hai because Betty Pang, my old high school friend, gave me some great feedback that it would be easier for you guys to see the color of the tea if I use a clear glass. Um Okay, so real quick, you can use a gaiwan to be the cup that you're drinking tea from, like this, which is how they often will serve you tea in like an old Beijing tea house. They would put the tea straight in there, serve it to you like this, and then you would use the lid to like strain the loose leaves while you sip the liquor out, the liqueur out, um, which is what you call the liquid in brewed tea. That is a little bit advanced tea drinking technique in my opinion. Um, but you can also, instead of not just using it as a cup to drink, you can also use a gaiwan as your brewing vessel, sort of like you would use a teapot. And in a lot of ways it's more, it's easier and more flexible than a teapot. So we warmed up the thing, the gaiwan, sorry, the thing. Um, and I'm gonna put in some of the tea now. So, I do, I'm doing this by just sight, but I did try to measure it out beforehand to give you guys a clue. And it's approximately one teaspoon, like a generous teaspoon. And this, it, this cup's capacity is around 100 milliliters, which is between one third and one half cup. So that's about one teaspoon of this rolled up oolong to 100 milliliters of liquid, of water. Okay. So we're gonna do a rinse like we did last time. And like I said, rinsing is kind of warm up your tea and get it ready to unfurl and release its flavors. Um, I like to call it kind of like stretching before running. You're stretching your tea right now. Um, especially with a tea like this one today where it's, it's a tightly rolled ball, you really want to optimize how you're gonna open up that whole leaf. That was, that was my animation of a tea leaf <laughs> opening. <laughs> All right, so this is the rinse. Okay, so now we're ready to do the first tea. Okay, well you can kind of even see, yeah, they're loosening up a little bit now compared to the dry leaf. And now I'm gonna do the first steeping. So you wanna lift the lid off some water going and I have water that's almost boiling like just under boiling so like basically you boil the, the water let it sit a little bit and then you're using that that temperature okay so I'm gonna let it sit here for a while one of the benefits of using a guy one is that lidded dome is helping to trap the heat in the in the brewing um, so the technique so you're going to use 
what you what you're trying to do I mean you saw me do it with the rinse and um, with the heating up is you're using one hand to hold the lid at an angle and the other two fingers to hold the rim of the cup um, I would recommend practicing with cold water first not hot water especially not close to boiling water so practice with some cold water first um, I'm a super wimpy person so I always try to make sure the water is below the line that's going to touch the rim because if you let the water overflow in any way which some people do it's it's going to make the rim hotter and for wimpy people like me it's just like too hot so and that's just you could build up some endurance and the nice thing about using a guy one is you can um you have some easy access to look at your leaves so i mean you can look at open the lid and ooh, leaves are looking good they're open okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna decant it now and the rim is very hot guys it is very very hot but i am just trying to live through it oh i made it okay so so you can see the liqueur okay so betty did tell me that i should get a white piece of paper so behind this you can see the color better but i didn't sorry but um you can sort of see the color still <laughs> maybe you can see it better in the white cup okay so now i'm going to try it Ooh, it smells so good so fragrant Yeah, nice. The flavor came out good. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the leaves look like on this open this first season. So, you know, one, uh, um, a nice way to appreciate tea when you're using a guy one is to smell the aroma here. Oh, and you can definitely smell like this, the sweetness and like the kind of creamy floralness, which is really nice. Okay, so let me show you. The leaves are like a lot more open now, right? But they're still not totally fully open. Sorry, this is only the first steeping. So we're gonna do the second steeping and you're gonna see the difference. I'm gonna drink this real quick. I don't recommend drinking quick, but um, I have a 10 minute limit here, so I'm drinking quick for this video. Okay. So let's do the second steeping. So I no longer sell any gaiwans. We used to make our own gaiwans, just like this gaiwan you see here. Uh, we used to work with artisans in Jingdezhen, which is like the ancient porcelain making capital of China, um, which still has a thriving porcelain industry now, which is really cool. So I no longer have any to sell, nor do I make them any longer, but I can refer you to Wing On Wo, which is a fifth generation Chinatown, New York Chinatown business. They also work in Jingdezhen and they work with artisans there and they have three beautiful gaiwans on their website, which you could buy online, support them. Chinatown businesses are really suffering right now. I mean, most a lot of people are suffering right now, but Chinatown businesses have been suffering for a while. So it would be a great way to support a small business while you are going on your guy one journey. Okay, so this is from the last steeping. I'm just gonna put that there, I'll drink it later. So let's see. So this is the nice thing about guy one is you can quickly check visually how your leaves are doing. Um, and another really nice benefit for gaiwans is they are easier to wash than teapots. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is really hot. So I'm gonna put it down again, but then I'm gonna show you how I'm holding this cup. So I'm using, like I use my index finger. I put the lid at an angle. I use my index finger and my thumb and my ring finger, or you can use your, well, my hands are just small ring finger and then I use that to hold the edges and I'm using the index finger to keep the lid at an angle. So try it out. Um, let me know if you have any questions and definitely I'll put the links on the description of this video so you can read up more on the background of a gaiwan and the background of Taiwanese tea, the Taiwanese oolong tea, which is what we made today. Okay, um, thanks so much for watching and next week I'm going to try to brew green tea because I know um, People, there's just a very common mistakes in making green tea. And so I just want to help people have a really great cup of green tea. And I'm going to teach you two things that you should look out for. Okay, thanks a lot.